Alright guys, welcome to your 51st and last tutorial of this mini-series. So basically what we did right now is we built some functions that allowed us to enter two little pieces of information and whenever we click the save button, it's going to go ahead and save those to a variable. However, I could say, oh yeah, just trust me, whenever you click the save button, it's going to save it to a variable. It's also going to put a million dollars in your bank account and cure, you know, whatever disease you might have. But you know, you aren't going to believe me unless I can prove it to you guys. So the truth is, it's not going to give you a million dollars or do anything like that, but it is going to save a variable. So how am I going to prove this to you guys? Well, I'm going to display the information of that variable right here. So what we want to do right after we save the variable is, and typically you wouldn't just, you know, save a variable and display the information right to them, or else that would be kind of worthless. You won't even need, you know, session storage for that. But just for this example, it's the only way that I can prove it to you guys. So now what I want to do is display the information in one. So what this is going to do is basically show you the information in the right hand side right here. So this is a function that we actually need to code but it only takes about three lines I'm guessing. So function and it's called display we can just go ahead and copy this stuff right here. It's called display and it takes a parameter of what the parameter is basically the name of your variable. So in this case it's just one. So the very first line we need to basically reference this blue box right here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and make a variable called write box, and I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit here. Document, make sure I get my equal signs. Document get element by ID. Now the ID of this write box was write box. So now basically this write box right here symbolizes this blue box on our screen. Now after this, what I want to do is I want to retrieve the data from that variable. So right here I said, okay, what this line of code does is it saves a variable on the computer. Well now that we have some information saved, I want to tell you guys how to access that information. So for variable, I'm just going to go ahead and name this two, two, right like that. What I want to do is hit session storage and remember session storage is basically the class that is built in that allows us to save and retrieve variables so whenever we needed to set a variable we use the method set item whenever we want to retrieve a variable we need to use the function get item now get item only takes one parameter and it's basically what is the name of your item well we pass the in the name right here which was one. Now, basically we're passing it in the name of person. Person is the name of our variable or item as they might call it. I uh, <laughs> I just noticed that I use the terms like function and method interchangeably. I also use the term item and variable interchangeably, but I don't want to confuse you guys. Whenever I say item or variable, it's basically the same thing. It's basically data that you can store that has a value. So basically, our item or variable is named person so that is what we're passing in right here so now we're saying okay get the value of it and store it in the variable called two so the value of person is Bucky so now whenever we use the variable two it should write Bucky so now what I want to do is just output this in my right hand side of the screen right here in my right box so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit right box enter HTML, this basically means whatever's inside here, replace it with whatever I type in here. Now for the inner HTML, let me just go ahead and write something like name of variable, and I'm just going to go ahead and make this equal to one, because remember, the name of your variable is basically person. So whenever we save this, it should say the name of your variable is person. And whenever you want to append a string in JavaScript, you need to use these two little plus signs. If you don't know what this is, then go ahead and watch my JavaScript tutorials. So now what I want to do is on the next line, in order to move down to the next line, I'm just going to add a break. And I'm just going to write value, and that's probably good enough. The value is, and I'm just going to go ahead and append the variable two. So remember, like I said, one is basically 
the name of the item and two is basically we retrieved the value of the item so let me go ahead and save this and make sure this works so let me go ahead and refresh this beast person has a value of Bucky now let's go ahead and save it the name of the variable is person and the value is Bucky this could also write the name of the item is person and its value is Bucky so let's go ahead and make another one person um uh, Ash, Ashley so whenever we store I want to mention this just like JavaScript whenever we try to store something else it pretty much overwrites this person so it says okay you already have a variable called person but now you're setting it equal to a different value so whenever we do that it pretty much overwrites it and gives it a new value so this pretty much works the exact same as JavaScript except uh, you know it's just a little bit different it's for websites instead so what I'm gonna be doing is I know this is kinda confusing and even though we can just save everything in variables these variables right here they can't be saved as you go from website to website to website or excuse me web page to web page as soon as you go to a different web page these variables right here are going to get destroyed so that is why we need to use this web storage API it gives us the ability to do some cool things aside from just storing variables from web page to web page it lets us do some other cool things too which I'm gonna be talking about in the upcoming tutorials but anyways like I said I know all of this is really confusing so what I'm gonna be do is I'm gonna be taking all of this code and I'm gonna be putting it on my forum tnbforum.com and if you want it just go ahead and copy it and just play with it a little bit and once you guys play with it for just a little bit you're gonna see how it works why it works and uh, you know it's gonna make sense to you guys I promise so for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe Ugh, I need to go get a drink of apple juice or something anyways I'm gonna go get a drink and I will see you guys in the next lesson